Gotta be honest, not a fan. Not a fan. Hey guys, my name is Maven Huffman and I had the coolest job in the world. From 2001 through 2005, I was a WWE superstar and I was able to work with household names, guys like The Rock, Triple H, Undertaker, Stone Cold Steve Austin. So what we're gonna be doing in this video is I'm gonna be rating and reacting to these superstars that I had the fortune to work with and <laughs> sometimes misfortune to know backstage. Were they cool or were they jerks? I don't know who's coming up. We're going to find out together. All right. <laughs> you had to start with this one, huh? Here's what I can say about the game. Triple H. In ring, there's absolutely nobody better. I had several matches with Hunter, and the one thing about wrestling is some guys blow up, meaning in the ring you get tired, because wrestling, it's a different type of calisthenics. The reason I bring this up for, for this man is I would blow up, and I would, I would blow up you know, in two or three minutes. I worked Hunter on two different occasions. His work rate is so good that he kept me from blowing up. Now, backstage Stage, you also knew that whenever you ran into Hunter or whenever you saw Hunter, you were in essence running into the office. What do I mean by office? Management. But he was a direct link all the way up the ladder to the Kevin Dunns, to the Shane McMahons, and ultimately to Vince. I like Hunter. I don't know if Hunter likes me. I never knew. But you know what? I will always wish him well. Let's see where the next one is. <laughs> All right, I love this guy. The next one on the list is Chris Jericho. First and foremost, amazing. Amazing human being. One of the nicest guys, you know, backstage. Now, Jericho made me earn his respect. Jericho wasn't one of the guys that immediately outgoing when it came to me. Obviously, I came from Tough Enough, and if you don't know, Tough Enough was a competition show and not the way most wrestlers got into the business. You know, some guys made me earn their respect. Chris is one of those guys. Once I got it, could not have been the cool, you know, a, a more cool individual to me. Here's what most people do not know about this guy. In wrestling, we do a, a sport that is athletic and we all come across as tough guys. I'll never tell people I'm a, I'm a tough guy. Jericho is a legit tough guy. Chris is a guy that at my lowest, and I mean outside of the ring, at my lowest, Chris was there for me. And I'm happy to see him still doing what he's doing in the business. And he is a guy that I will wish the best. All right, here we go on to the next guy. Let's see who it is. <laughs> All right, Kane. <laughs> Nicest guy on earth. Absolute nicest guy on earth. Obviously, you know, we all know about the big red machine in the ring. Amazing, you know, just, you know, amazing worker. The first things I remember about Kane, during my time, we would all have to be at the arena at one o'clock. Live airings went on at nine. You know, we went live at nine o'clock. So to be there at one, you got a lot of time to kill. I remember one of the first things I saw backstage was Kane playing video games. Now, you see this guy and you're like, the last thing on earth you think is that he's into video games. Most people don't know this about Kane, but Kane, comic book lover, he's not what you think. Obviously, now he's the mayor of, I think, a town in, in Tennessee. Amazing worker, amazing at everything he did in the ring, but backstage, truly one of the nicest guys and nice, a genuine nice guy genuinely cared about. I was in WWE for, I would say, probably a little over a year, and we had a uh, death. Crash Holly passed away, and Kane made it a point to pull myself and Randy Orton aside and just to, just to make sure we were on the right right path, make sure that the next, you know, wrestler that was that was read about, you know, passing away way too early wasn't one of us. I guarantee you I could see Kane today. Haven't seen him in probably 15 years and I'd hug him like no time at all passed. He'd get my vote too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, who? <Hey. laughs> Gotta be honest, not a fan, not a fan. The reason I'm not a fan isn't for his work rate in the ring. It's just how he is behind backstage, man. We're talking about Sean. What you see in the ring, 
is, you know, kind of what you get backstage from him. Never had any really beef with him. Another guy probably didn't like the tough enough, you know, in the way I came into the business and wasn't overly eager about helping me. We did a couple tag matches together. Now, coming up, I was always a fan of The Rock. I, you know, I could probably even argue that I wouldn't be in the business without you know, The Rock. I was just a big fan and I loved watching how he did. Now, what do they say? Imitation, most sincerest form of flattery. So if I imitated and sometimes would maybe throw a punch or a kick or whatever like The Rock, it wasn't on purpose. It was because I think everybody takes the people that they look up to and uses that as motivation and as, hey, if he does it this way, maybe that's the way to do it. Didn't mean to, but Sean was always always you know quick to tell me backstage stop trying to be the rock stop trying to be the rock i wasn't for whatever reason never took to me and never took to him even still though i hope he's doing well <laughs> ah man yeah gotta be honest never was super close with this guy but immense respect probably for my money i could argue one of the you know top five wrestlers of all time of course, we're talking about Eddie. Passed away 2005, you know, obviously way, way too early. Eddie was one of those guys that it was just, I use the word intimidating, but I don't mean in a physical sense. Like I never, I never was scared of Eddie, but just intimidating, you know, because there's some guys that you, you know, you'll never be on their level. I could wrestle a gazillion years and I'll never be half the worker Eddie is. One time and you know we got to talk you know talk to business I'd say for about a good 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, he watched one of my matches and I forget which one it was on Raw but he was critiquing it. This was after the show and for him to take 10 to 15 minutes to try to help me get better I always uh, appreciated it. Eddie has and rightfully so respect from everyone that not only that he worked with, but everyone from, from the wrestling universe as a true and forever legend. All right, who's next? Ah, <laughs> ah easy enough, Edge. Ah, Adam, how he's still doing what he's doing to this day blows my mind. I get asked all the time. I still do shows and, you know, guys and promoters are always asking me, you want to wrestle? Will you wrestle? And I'm like, absolutely not. How he is still going and working at the rate he works at, no clue. Nicest guy, always helpful. I broke my arm. Back then, whenever you get injured or whenever you'd be out of action for a while to get you back, you know, in wrestling shape to keep you from blowing up, they would send us down to OVW, Ohio Valley. I was you know, rehabbing, coming off of a broken arm and Adam and I were down at Ohio Valley together and they put us in a tag match together. And, but we were, you know, he was opposite from me. To play a rib, and a rib's a practical joke. He ran me. You know, we were calling spots in the ring. He's like, shoot off, take a tackle. You know, drop down, pin, you know, you know, shoot off again. And he was doing it on purpose. He wanted to blow me up. He did, he succeeded in it. And when he did, he broke character and started laughing at me because he could see me gassed. Wish Adam all the best. He was the nicest guy. Again, another guy with tremendous amount of, of respect, not only you know, for what he does in the ring, but for what he's meant to the business outside the ring. It's kind of though that he took Lita. <laughs> all right, let's see who the next one is. <laughs> Immediately, once you see this guy, a smile comes to my face. Now, I'm actually not gonna show you who this is yet. In a match, I believe it was a battle royal one time. You know, in wrestling, you have your chops. This guy chopped me in a match. I believe it was a battle royal one time. And I had a handprint the next day because I went home and showed my buddy from here all the way down to right above my belly button. There's only one person I could be talking about. The big slow, <laughs> the big show. Paul, Paul was always, you know, always nice to me. You know, didn't go out of his way to, you know, ever help me or show me anything. Whenever anybody asked me, you know, hey, I wanna be a wrestler, but I think I'm too small. Same things come out of my mouth for years. I tell people, you're not Rey Mysterio or you're not the big show. All of us are in between. You know, for being as big as he was and being able to move as well as he could. Yeah, I always had my respect. I hope Paul's doing well. <laughs> ah, WrestleMania 18. 
I'll love this guy forever for what he did. Now, funny story about WrestleMania 18, gold dust. You know, what can you say? And you know, when you're coming up after and you're trying to follow a legend, I kind of feel for both him and Cody. Now, both of them have, you know, blazed their own path in their way. And they've done an amazing job in doing it. And I know Dustin had to, you know, go kind of outside the parameters of the norms, which is why you have gold dust. But okay, it worked. You know, great guy backstage would keep, you know, I don't want to say to himself, but would keep within his within his clique. But was never rude by any stretch of the imagination. Always professional. Helped me put my matches together every time I worked with him. Made me look like a million bucks. Didn't necessarily have to. Thank you for making me look like a million bucks in WrestleMania 18. You sure as hell didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> All right, obviously, you know, like we're talking about Cena. I don't think he's the best worker. Well, don't, don't think he's a good worker. But then again, I don't think I'm a good worker. So I'm looking at, look at all this stuff on him. Like, look at this, the hat, wristbands, literally could come up with anything and market it and little kids would want it. Crazy enough though, is I actually think he's a better actor than he is a wrestler. Uh, about 10 months before I met him for the first time, I walked into OVW, Ohio Valley. When I was there, there were two developmental programs. One was OVW, Ohio Valley. Mine, I was at HWA, Heartland Wrestling Association. I walked into OVW because we would make the two hour drive because that's where we would do our TV tapings. And I remember the first day walking in there to do our TV, there I saw the prototype, John Cena, Brock Lesnar, and Dave Batista, three of the most impressive physical specimens. I always thought he threw the, threw the funniest looking punch ever, but I guess when you're coming up with wristbands and hats and shirts and everything that every little kid wants, you don't have to throw the best punch in the world. <laughs> well done, John. Keep it up. Here we go. Let's see who's next. Ah, oh my God. Yeah, love this guy. One of my favorite human beings on earth, Dave Batista. Another guy who, um, in my personal life, you know, helped me out. You know, at one of my lowest points. I would take a bullet for Dave Batista in the leg, in the leg, but I would take a bullet. I don't need to tell stories about his end work. Everybody knows how great of a worker he was. Everybody knows about evolution. Everybody knows about his movies and how he's Drax now. But let me give you a quick story on, on who Dave Batista is. In my hometown of Harrisonburg, Virginia, the Gold's Gym was opening up a new location and the owner of the gym came up to me and said, Maven, we'd love to maybe get you know one of your wrestling buddies down for our grand opening. I mean, I said, okay, who's your wish list? They said, Dave Batista. And I said, let me ask him. I asked Dave and without hesitation, within a second, he said, absolutely. Dave's line was out the door and down the driveway for people to meet. Now, mind you, I go to this gym, I'm in this gym every week and knowing everyone to meet me. But that show goes to show the level of star and <laughs> this over here. Love this guy. I can't wait till his next movie comes out just so I can go out, pay it forward, pay my money to, to support him and support whatever he does. All right, who is next? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you know we're talking about flair. I asked Rick in, I want to say probably 2004, Rick, man, like I watched you, I watched you when I was growing up, man, you've literally made all the money in the world there is to make. Why are you out here doing this? He looked at me and said, Maeve, because back in the 80s, if I made 10 grand in a night, I spent 20. <laughs> a lot of guys have gimmicks. By gimmick, I mean their personality, their character. This man lived his gimmick. This man, what you see, that was him. I have seen him in a bar. I have closed bars down with him. And at his age, still the life of the party. Still what everybody paid to see or came to see. First time I was ever, ever able to wrestle him, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. My music hits and I go out and I'm doing, you know, getting my gimmick over. I'm in the ring, you know, doing bouncing around and stuff. And then I hear Rick's music and 
I was transformed and transferred back to being that eight-year-old kid and I'm standing in the ring just glossy-eyed and Michael Kyoto, the ref comes over to me and he whispers in my ear he goes Maeve stop being a fan and I was like oh yeah <laughs> probably the one of the best wrestlers in the ring and the life of the party out let's see who the next one is <laughs> wow now in baseball a recruit is always rated on five tools this guy is in my opinion the best he's the five tool wrestler and once he's done wrestling he'll go down as one of the best ever for my money and i'm not saying this just because we spent a lot of time uh, in cars together and became buddies but for my money he was the best and probably maybe one of the best to ever do everything he had the size he had the look he could talk on the mic and he was psychologically one of the best in-ring workers now what do i mean by psychologically that means he could put a match together he knew how to keep an audience in the palm of their hands and make them care for every move that he either dished out or every move that he took backstage out of the ring i had some of my best nights ever with this guy he was one of the craziest human beings i've ever met now if you ask him he'll tell you i was one of the craziest people he's ever met no and he'll tell you i got him in trouble no there was no getting randy in trouble randy was royalty but he's definitely a guy who i will always you know be thankful for the time that i you know had not only in the ring with him because oh, i had some of my best matches with randy randy was just like hunter was easy to work randy was the same he's fluid you know there's no wasted movements in his wrestling yeah love the guy hope he's hope he's happy all right here we go <laughs> I can't believe honestly this guy wasn't wasn't last none of us I'm not here if not for this guy you're not watching this video if not for for this guy in fact I could probably you know make an argument that you know America is slightly different if not for this guy and how what do I mean by that we don't have sports entertainment as we know it if not for Vinnie Mac Everybody always asks me, what's Maven, what's Vince like? And I, I say the same thing to everybody. <laughs> he signs the front of the checks, I sign the back. He always was looking at how to make not only his, his company better, not only how to make the show better, but how to make you better. One story tells you everything you need to know about him. And a lot of people don't realize it, but Vince lost a parent from cancer. In 2004, I lost my mom to, uh, to cancer. And the very night that she passed away, I didn't get a call from a secretary. I didn't get a call for, I didn't get a text. I got a personal phone call from Vince to tell me how truly sorry he was. And, you know, that meant the world to me. Empathetic for what you know he went through but the fact that and it wasn't it was late when he called me but the fact that he took time out of his out of his evening to call me and you know, offer condolences always meant the world to me now the knock on Vince is going to be that you're a commodity to him that you are you know just a an, an item that you are someone that he's going to try to use up and once he makes his money out of you he's gonna spit you out and I'm not going to say that that's not true. Uh, there's a lot of guys that once their time was up, they were gone. Hey, I'm one of them. Vince is one that when you're making him money, you are one of his favorites. And when you're not, he can do without you. I guess that's though how you become a billionaire. Last one. Let's see who it is. <laughs> Okay, now I see why you uh, you picked this guy last. I'm not here without this guy, Taker. I meet tons of people every year, and I get asked one question. What was it like eliminating The Undertaker? Well, that spot in the Royal Rumble, and if you don't know, every year there's an event called the Royal Rumble. 30 men go into this, uh, into this one match, and at the end, there's one man left standing. Now, in 2002, Undertaker was one of the early entries, and he had thrown out so many people 
and then my music hit. Now I was a few months fresh out of Tough Enough. I didn't even have wrestling trunks. I didn't even have wrestling boots at the time. I came out in sneakers and uh, workout pants. So no one thought I was gonna do anything against this guy. And I go in and I was fortunate enough to hit him with the one move I could do, a drop kick while his back was turned. That, that changed the, the entire trajectory of my career. That one night in Atlanta, Georgia, it wouldn't have happened without his approval, without his blessing. Where Tough Enough put me in the business, my trajectory took off because of this man. Backstage, he was the godfather of the locker room. There's no one, and I mean no one, not anyone that has more respect backstage in a wrestling locker room than Undertaker. The man is wrestling. The man, literally for over two decades, you know, epitomized what it was like to be a professional wrestler. And he didn't have to do what, what, what he did for me, but he did it and thus gave me a career. Taker, thank you for a career. Ah, great taking a trip down memory lane, but some memories I would love to forget. If you wanna see the worst real beating I ever got in WWE, click right here.